Hi, welcome to Channel 17. I'm Megan. I'm here with Kristen Viennes um, of the Vermont Federation of Nurses, right? Correct. Um, Kristen, tell me a little bit about you, how you got involved in nursing to begin with. So um, the medical field is something I was always interested in since I was very young. I believe my kindergarten teacher actually made a comment that I liked the hospital station they had set up in oh. kindergarten. Um, it's just always something I've been interested in. I love taking care of people. Um, and I'm just naturally a compassionate, um, empathetic person. Great. And how long have you been working? You, you work at the UVM Medical Center. Correct. And you work in, tell us a little bit about the job that you do there. So I am a registered nurse in the neonatal intensive care unit, and I have been there for six years. Six years. So the union has been at uh, UVM Medical Center, formerly Fletcher Allen, since 2002, correct? Yes. And you joined the union when you became a nurse? Correct, yeah. When I was employed by the hospital, I joined the union. Had you been involved in union politics before that? or I had not. No, that yeah. was my first experience. Tell us a little bit about that. What was that like to... Um, initially, um, it was kind of a learning curve trying to figure out what it all meant. I actually started the summer of a contract negotiation. Um, so just hearing little snippets and that's actually why I got so involved this year was because I, you know, wanted our unit to have a voice like we hadn't had before. Um, so what's nice about our union, our bargaining committee is we have representation from every unit. So every unit has a voice because every unit is vastly different in how they operate and the patients they take care of. So talk about that a little bit when you say a voice. Where is that voice being heard or where are you trying to have that voice heard? So we are trying to have the hospital hear what is happening um, on our units on a day-to-day -day basis and you know things that need improvement. And you know they, they've been struggling with hearing us and we've been you know, describing the unsafe staffing situations. There is a huge nursing shortage. We have 172 vacancies um, for nurses, LNAs, support staff. And across the hospital? Across the hospital. 172 vacancies. Correct. Yeah. So this hospital, the UVM Medical Center, serves uh, close to a million people, a population of greater Chittenden County area, greater mm -hmm. Vermont. Talk about that a little bit. Who are your patients? Yeah, so we serve um, Vermont and upstate New York. We, now that the University of Vermont Medical Center has expanded and become the University of Vermont Health Network, um, we are responsible for a million patients throughout Vermont and upstate New York. And we, as the level one trauma center for the entire area, we are the only one and we receive the sickest of the sickest patients. And over the past few years, we, the acuity of those patients, how sick they are, has increased. And we've also seen an increase in volume. So we have more patients who are sicker and we have a huge staffing problem. Yeah. <clears throat> so tell, like give us a little picture. Um, you're in the neonatal intensive care unit. So you're working with babies mm -hmm. who are very sick. Very. Um, in the six years that you've been there, how has that what have you seen in terms of changes? So we haven't seen any positive changes. We've seen things get worse. Um, actually, just in the past few months, we have seen, um, we now have seven traveler, traveling nurses in our unit because Explain we can't. Explain to our viewers what a traveling nurse so is. So a travel nurse is contracted to come in and fill, help fill um, positions for um, usually a 13-week contract. They come in. They work for 13 weeks and they leave. So that's how we are filling positions currently because we can't recruit and retain nurses. It At the hospital, it has been a, re a revolving door in units such as the ER, who has 30 travelers right now. They cannot fill positions. The OR also has is staffed with many, many travelers. There's no commitment to the community. There's no commitment. Um, to the organization. They come, they fill a position, and they leave. And nurses who come in for interviews for these positions see what the hospital is offering for wages, and they would have to take such a pay cut that 
they don't take the position. Do the travelers get a um, higher wage coming? Much through? higher. Yeah. So they are paid at a premium and they are very expensive. Um, and apparently the hospital values paying them more than paying us. Tell us if you were to be able to sit, and the, the union is a way, you know, as you're saying, to have the needs of units heard. Mm -hmm. So what does the neonatal intensive care unit need? Uh, we need uh, more staff. We will have times where we have our charge nurses who are responsible for overseeing the entire unit, taking a patient assignment. We have, you know, there's, when babies are really sick, we have nurses, just one nurse to one baby. Well, there's times where it should be one nurse to one baby and it's stretched to one nurse to two babies. Mm -hmm. um, it leaves room f when you're short staffed for errors, for bed sores, for um, you know longer hospital stays. And also when we're so short staffed and we're stretched so thin, we cannot provide the education for patients that they deserve and that they need. So talk a little, little bit, what would that look like? What kind of, what does that mean when you're saying the education for patients that they need? So when we are getting ready to discharge a patient home, they have, if they have a new diagnosis or you know something complicated to go home with, they need to know where their status is, what they need to do. If, if it's a new diabetic, that is a huge learning curve and they need a lot of time spent with them with education. And when we're short staffed and you've got um, critically ill patients, your time priorities in terms of triaging what's most important, it's gonna take away from the new diabetic who needs all that teaching because there's someone who can't breathe. So it's, it's not fair to the patients, it's not fair to the community. They deserve our best every day and nurses are in tears because they can't provide their best every day because we're so understaffed and not just the nurses, our support staff as well. Currently the um, LNAs have a 40% turnover rate and we can't keep them there and we need them to do our jobs. We are being pulled to do non-nursing functions as part of the short staffing and it takes, again, takes away from patient care and patient education. So the LN LNAs are the licensed nurse assistants, so they're the folks that are working with you to help. Correct. Um, make a patient's experience exactly valuable. Um, so how many, how many nurses are at UVM Medical Center right now that are represented by the union? So we have 1,800 nurses um, who are represented by the union. Yeah. And of those 1,800 nurses, over 1,300 came out to vote for a strike authorization vote last week. And 94% 94% voted to authorize a strike. Yeah, so over 1,100. Um, over 1,200. Over 1,200 folks are voting um, to authorize a strike. So this is, the union comes to the table every three years Correct. to do bargaining. You started bargaining in? March. March. We've been bargaining for yeah. months. And you got to June and there was no agreement. Mm -hmm. And so this authorization to strike, what does that mean? So that means that the members, the nurses, um, have given the bargaining committee permission to call a strike if necessary. It doesn't mean a strike will 100% happen. It means that if we feel that it is needed, that we can call for that strike. We will give the hospital a 10-day notice before we strike. And how is the hospital responding to that? Um, so far, they um, haven't said anything to us across the table about it, but we do know that they are actively recruiting nurses through a company. Um, some people refer to them as scab nurses who come in to fill the positions for a strike. Mm -hmm. And what is that, what's gonna, what would that look like? What would a strike look like? So a strike would mean that um, whenever we call it, we authorized a two day strike. Mm -hmm. So it'd be over two days. Uh, the nurses would walk out and the, um, the incoming agency nurses would, would fill in. Um, they don't know the institution. They don't know the patient populations. They don't know the units. They don't even know where things are on the unit. They don't have a relationship with all the other um, people who work there, the secretaries, the respiratory therapists, um, the LNAs, all the techs. And it, 
it puts you know a risk out there for yeah. the patients who are there and that is on the hospital they are not listening to us we don't want to strike but the situations have gotten so bad that it's affecting the patients and that is why we stood up and made this vote yeah talk a little bit about that that you don't want this to happen no is the hospital available to provide you what you're asking for very much so um, the hospital has had huge profits or margins over the past few years. Uh, last year, their um, margin was over $38 million. They had an excess revenue. $38 million in, in revenue. Mm -hmm. And where does that money go? Uh, how they would like to allocate it. A lot of that money actually goes to executive compensation and bonuses. Our, the CEO of the hospital, John Bremstead, makes over $2 million a year. All the executives on a yearly basis get 20 to 30% raises and then bonuses on top of that. Yeah. So I was struck this morning uh, or yesterday, the Vermont State Auditor Doug Hoffer released a letter to the Green Mountain Care Board. And tell me, the Green Mountain Care Board oversees healthcare in Vermont? Correct. Um, and so talk a little bit about that letter that Doug Hoffer put forward. And uh, we have, yeah, go ahead. So the letter um, that the state auditor put out there was to the Green Mountain Care Board asking about the excessive executive pay at the hospital. It's a nonprofit organization and they've had these high revenues and their executives are getting huge raises every year, huge bonuses, and some of those bonuses are actually off the backs of the nurses. Those bonuses are for, one of them was for increased quality of patient care. Mm -hmm. That's nurses' yeah. work. So maybe we could bring that um, graphic up. So that uh, at the top is the UVM Medical Center CEO. And on the far right, it says that uh, their salary has been uh, raised 625% over since uh, over the last basically like 10, 15 years, right? Correct. And then um, the auditor is presenting a series of different um, pos job positions in the state of Vermont and how they're... Um, and if you look down at the bottom right, maybe you can explain that a little bit. Registered nurses are in the 17%. Yep. So over the past 20 years, registered nurses have seen a 17% increase in pay. Over the, ten, the past 10 years, those wages have been stagnant. They're not even matching the cost of living. So nurses now are making less than they were 10 years ago. Their money is not going as far. And if you look at the top there for the... CEO of the hospital, Dr. John Brumstead, over the past 20 years, well, the executive, the CEO of the hospital, has seen a 625% increase in wages. So what are the nurses asking for? You're at the bargaining table now. Mm -hmm. You had a meeting last night. Correct. And you're going to have how many more sessions? We have two more sessions two scheduled more sessions. next week. So what are you asking for from the hospital? So one big thing uh, is that one of our sister hospitals, CVPH over in Plattsburgh, actually makes more than we do. We receive their sickest patients. We have the qualified nurses to take care of those patients. Mm -hmm. And what the hospital is saying is we're not worth what they're being paid. We are asking for parity with CVPH. We have done research across the country of similar institutions and similar cost of living areas. And we are easily five to $10 an hour below what those institutions are being paid. So we are asking for parity. And when the hospital says, well, we're paying what the market, fair market value is for this position, mm -hmm. we're not comparing. How, what's your response to that? So uh, initially, they would not release the research they had done on what they called fair market value. We have since acquired a couple of those, which makes our point even more. Yeah. So we should, essentially, one of them was telling us we should have asked for more for what the market value was. 
last night in the meeting, they actually compared us to Uver University of Vermont professors. That is a completely different career, different job. Mm -hmm. Nurses work weekends, they work holidays, they work nights. We are in the thick of it 24 seven. We are saving lives, we deal with patient death and you know, hold families' hands while they are losing their loved ones. That's significant. Yeah. Um, what are some of the other things um, that you're asking for? At one point, there was a um, the $15 minimum wage for other hospital employees. Is that, a, you want to yes. talk about that? Is that so on the So that directly goes back to the safe patient care. We cannot keep the support staff that we need to be able to take care of our patients. So that would cover LNAs, um, turn teams, our techs. We, they are medically trained. It's, you can't just apply from the, for the position off the street. They are medically trained, they have to have a certification, and they have to take special classes. They should not be making minimum wage when they have the special training, and we need them. We cannot recruit, we cannot retain them. A 40% turnover rate, mm -hmm. that is huge. Yeah. So we need to do something to get them here and to keep them here, just as with our nurses. So what are you hoping um, to see out of the next two bargaining sessions? I'm hoping to see movement from the hospital. Last evening, we had another meeting and they showed no movement in their wage proposal. Right now, it's, their proposal is 1% over three years. We also, um, from previous contract negotiations, get a 2% step increase every year and the hospital is trying to count that as part of our raise. It does not even cover the cost of inflation. So over the next three years, the cost um, will be 7.2% increase there. Uh -huh. With the step increase in that 1%, that's 7%. Yeah. So, and one of the things that I've noticed in, in some of the writing about this is the hospital has a certain way of looking at these numbers and the union has another way of looking at these numbers. Mm -hmm. And probably for the majority of people out there, the numbers are are not really what they're looking at. They're, so can you talk about that? Like what's the, you know, what's the meat of this or the heart of it? Yeah, so that 2% step increase uh -huh. um, is part of our wage scale. So it's built into the wage scale that we already have. Um, so what they're offering on top of that as a wage increase, yeah. as a true wage increase, is 1% over three years. That only includes two-thirds of our nurses. One-third of our nurses who have committed themselves the longest at UVM Medical Center, who have been here for decades, because they're at the top of the wage scale, they get 1%, and Got that it. is it. That's it, yeah. And you're asking for? We are asking for, currently we are at 22.5% um, over three years. Mm -hmm. That is how we get to parity. The wages have been stagnant for 10 years, so the number looks big, it looks scary. But yeah. when you break it down, take away those step increases, right now we're currently at 13% the first year, 4.75% the second and third years. Yeah. And that helps get us to parity. Yeah. And you're, the heart of it, though, is that you, what you're trying to do for the patients. Can you talk about that a little yes. bit more? Yes. So the reason we are pushing so hard for parity is that we are competing. There is a national nursage, nursing shortage. Mm -hmm. So we are competing with other hospitals locally, yes, because CVPH pays more. But on a national scale, there are hospitals out there who are offering higher wages with l less cost of living and twenty to $30,000 sign-on bonuses. We have a huge recruitment and retention problem at the hospital and in the state. Young people are not staying, they are leaving. We also have the baby boomers who are starting to retire and are gonna be retiring in the next few years. Mm -hmm. So we have more nurses leaving than we, do ha than we have coming in. And we, we want our patients to be safe. We want our patients to have the quality of care they deserve. And in order to be competitive and 
recruit and retain the best of the best of nurses, we need to make the salaries comparable. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have some APRN positions that have been open for two years. It got to the point where so many people were coming in to interview and when they saw the wages, they walked away. Mm. That HR started showing the wages up front to not waste anybody's time. Mm -hmm. What's the, um, do you like working at UVM Medical Center? I love working there. I love the community we serve. I love working in the NICU. My coworkers are amazing. We give high quality care and we are proud of that. And now, that's, now that the staffing is affecting that quality of care is why the nurses are standing up. Okay. Well, Kristen, thanks for coming in today. Is there anything more that you feel is important to share with folks? Yes, um, we have a town hall meeting mm -hmm. this evening at Burlington High School at 6 p.m. Yep. We're going to be there and we'll record that meeting and share it with folks um, on the Channel 17 um, stage. And um, I really appreciate that you came in and took this time to tell us a little bit about you and about the UVM Medical Center nurse bargaining. Um. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, take care. Thanks.